The Starweaver shuddered as the first salvo from the robotic ships impacted its shields. Sergeant Jack Cooper steadied himself against the tactical console, his eyes fixed on the swarm of enemy vessels rapidly approaching on the viewscreen. Shields holding at 92%, Lieutenant Greystone reported, his voice tense. But there's a lot more where that came from. Zack's laugh, the Tsar Quinn commander, turned to Jack. Envoy Cooper, your expertise in unconventional tactics may be our edge here. What do you suggest? Jack's mind raced, analyzing the robotic fleet's formation. Their movements were precise, almost predictable in their machine-like efficiency. An idea began to form. Their coordination is too perfect, Jack said, thinking out loud. Zack's laugh, is it possible they're operating on a shared network? The Tsar Quinn's skin rippled with colors of affirmation. Yes, but our past attempts to disrupt it have always failed. Their encryption is. Forget disruption, Jack interrupted. What if we feed false data into their network instead? Krell Voxy called to the Tsar Quinn engineer. Can we modify our comma ray to mimic their signal frequency? Krell Vox's appendages waved in a gesture of possibility. It's theoretically possible, but we'd need to boost the signal strength significantly. Do it, Jack ordered. Greystone, work with Krellvox. Reroute power from non-essential systems if you have to. As the human and Tsar Quinn engineers rushed to implement Jack's plan, another volley rocked the ship. Shields down to 78% Greystone called out. Multiple hostile contacts launching what appear to be boarding pods. Jack turned to Zack's laugh. We need to prepare for borders. I'll coordinate our defense teams. The Tsar Quinn commander nodded. Go. Show these machines the folly of underestimating organic life. Jack sprinted from the bridge, tapping his comm unit. All defense teams, this is Envoy Cooper. Form mixed squads, human and Tsar Quinn together. Prepare for close quarters combat. He arrived at a critical juncture just as the first boarding pod breached the hull. The corridor filled with the sound of tearing metal as robotic forms began to emerge. Tsar Quinn, provide cover fire, Jack shouted. Humans, flank and engage in close combat. Aim for their joints. The next few minutes were a blur of action. Jack found himself fighting back to back with a Tsar Quinn warrior, their movements surprisingly in sync. Energy weapons flashed, illuminating the corridor in strobes of deadly light. Watch out, Jack yelled tackling the Tsar Quinn as a robot's energy blade sliced through the air where its head had been moments before. Rolling to his feet, Jack grabbed a fallen Tsar Quinn weapon and fired, the unfamiliar device pulsing in his hands as it disintegrated the robot. The Tsar Quinn looked at Jack with newfound respect, its skin flashing colors he hadn't seen before. There was no time for thanks, though, as more robots poured through the breach. Across the ship, similar scenes played out. Humans and Tsar Quinn, who weeks ago had been wary allies at best, now fought side by side against a common foe. The human's adaptability and unconventional tactics complemented the Tsar Quinn's advanced technology and disciplined fighting style. Back on the bridge, Greystone and Krellvox worked feverishly on the comma ray. It's ready, Greystone announced, his voice tense. But we've only got one shot at this before they adapt. Zack's lath turned to the tactical officer. Prepare to fire all weapons on my mark. Target the largest concentration of enemy ships. The moment stretched, the fate of the Star Weaver and its crew hanging in the balance. Then, now. A pulse of energy erupted from the Star Weaver, momentarily scrambling the robotic fleet's coordination. In that instant of confusion, the ship unleashed a devastating barrage. Robotic ships collided with each other, their perfect formation shattered. Some turned their weapons on their own allies, their targeting systems corrupted by the false data. On the lower decks, the boarding parties suddenly faltered, their movements becoming erratic. Jack and the defense teams pressed their advantage, pushing the invaders back. It's working, Jack, shouted into his comm. Push them back to the breaches. Seal them off as soon as they're clear. Hours seemed to pass in minutes as the tide of battle turned. When the last robot was expelled and the hull breaches sealed, an eerie quiet fell over the ship. Jack made his way back to the bridge, exhausted but alert. 
The view screen showed the debris field that was once the robotic fleet, with only a few damaged ships retreating into the distance. Zack's lath approached Jack, its skin cycling through a series of colors too complex for Jack to interpret. Envoy Cooper had said, its voice carrying a note of something Jack had never heard from Azar Quinn before genuine admiration. Your strategy was most impressive. I believe we may have underestimated your species' potential. Jack managed a tired smile. We humans have a saying necessity is the mother of invention. When our backs are against the wall, that's when we're often at our best. As the adrenaline of battle faded, Jack looked around the bridge. Humans and Zar Quinn were working side by side, tending to the wounded and repairing damaged systems. The barriers that had separated them seemed to have crumbled in the face of their shared victory. But as Jack's gaze drifted to the view screen, to the war-torn planet still looming before them, he knew this was only the beginning. They had won the first battle, but the war a war that, he was beginning to realize, held a significance he didn't yet fully understand was far from over. With a deep breath, Sergeant Jack Cooper, diplomat and now warrior, prepared himself for the challenges yet to come. The true test of this newfound alliance was just beginning. The aftermath of the battle left the Starweaver in a state of organized chaos. Repair crews, a mix of humans and Tsar Quinn working in unprecedented harmony, rushed to patch hull breaches and stabilize critical systems. Sergeant Jack Cooper found himself moving from deck to deck, coordinating efforts and boosting morale with his presence. As he entered a makeshift medical bay, Jack was struck by the sight of human and Tsar Quinn medics working side by side, their previous mistrust seemingly forgotten in the face of shared trauma and triumph. Envoy Cooper a voice called out. Jack turned to see Vexalia, the young Tsar Quinn engineer who had become something of a bridge between the two species. Her skin rippled with colors Jack now recognized as a mix of excitement and concern. The High Command is requesting your presence in the war room. Jack nodded, taking one last look at the wounded being tended to. Lead the way. As they walked, Vex Alia spoke in low tones. Your actions in the battle. They've caused quite a stir among my people. Many are reconsidering their views on humans. That's good to hear, Jack replied, though he sensed there was more to it. Vex Alia's colors shifted to a more somber hue. Yes, but there's much you don't understand about this conflict, about what it means to us. Before Jack could press for more details, they arrived at the war room. Inside, he found Zax Lath and several high-ranking Tsar Quinn officers gathered around a holographic display of the battle-scarred planet. Envoy Cooper Zax Lath greeted him, its skin pulsing with colors Jack had learned to associate with respect. Your strategy in the recent engagement was, most effective, we owe you a debt of gratitude. Jack inclined his head in acknowledgement. We all fought well today, human and Tsar Quinn alike. One of the older Tsar Quinn officers, its skin bearing the mottled patterns Jack had come to recognize as battle scars, stepped forward. Indeed, perhaps we were hasty in our judgment of your species' capabilities. Thank you, Jack said, sensing an opportunity. But I can't help feeling there's still much I don't understand about this conflict, about what it means to the Tsar Quinn people. The room fell silent. The Tsar Quinn exchanging looks that even Jack's growing familiarity with their color-based communication couldn't fully decipher. Finally, the scarred officer spoke again. Walk with me, Envoy Cooper, it said, gesturing towards the door. As they moved through the corridors of the Star Weaver, the officer began to speak. My name is Krell Zack. I have fought the machines for over seven of your Earth centuries. Jack's eyes widened at this, but he remained silent, sensing the importance of what was to come. Krelzak continued, its voice taking on a tone of reverence. This war against the robots, Envoy Cooper. It is a sacred war to us. It has been continuing for generations, shaping our society, our technology, our very identity. It has made us who we are today. They paused at a viewport, the ravaged planet looming large before them. Are including your people in this? Krelzak's skin rippled with complex emotions. This is a source of some of the hostility you've encountered among our crew. To some, it feels like a dilution of our sacred duty, an admission that we alone are not enough. Jack absorbed this, 
beginning to understand the depth of what they were dealing with. I had no idea, he said softly. Krelzak turned to face him fully. But perhaps, perhaps we have been short-sighted. Your people, those who were once our destroyers, could also be our liberators. Today's battle has shown us that there may be wisdom in this alliance that we did not initially see. The weight of these words settled on Jack's shoulders. He realized that he wasn't just navigating interspecies diplomacy anymore, he was being drawn into something akin to a holy war, a conflict that defined the very essence of Tsar Quinn's civilization. Krelzak Jack said carefully, I'm honored by your trust in sharing this, but I have to ask what happens if we succeed, if we defeat the robots for good. The Tsar Quinn's skin shifted to colors Jack had never seen before, conveying a complexity of emotion he could only guess at. That, Envoy Cooper, is a question that has haunted our philosophers for millennia. Who are we, if not the eternal guardians against the machine threat? As they made their way back to the war room, Jack's mind raced with the implications of what he'd learned. The alliance between humans and Tsar Quinn was more fragile and more vital than he'd ever imagined. They weren't just fighting for survival now, they were fighting for the very identity and future of an entire civilization. Entering the war room, Jack found the atmosphere had shifted. The Tsar Quinn officers looked at him with new eyes, a mix of curiosity and cautious hope evident in their color patterns. Zack's lath approached, its skin rippling with decision. Envoy Cooper, we've made a choice. We're going to share with you and your team our full historical records of this conflict. If we are to fight together, you must understand what you're truly fighting for. Jack nodded solemnly, understanding the magnitude of this gesture. Thank you, Commander. We won't let you down. As the Tsar Quinn began to bring up holographic displays of their long war against the machines, Jack felt a profound sense of responsibility settle over him. They had won the first battle, yes, but the true challenge was just beginning. Hours passed as Jack and his team pored over the Tsar Quinn historical records. The sheer scale of the conflict, spanning millennia and countless star systems, was staggering, but it was the details of the robotic threat's capabilities that truly chilled Jack to the bone. We need to inform Earth Command, Jack said, looking up from a particularly disturbing report on robot assimilation techniques. They need to understand what we're really up against here. Zack's lath skin rippled with concern. Are you certain, Envoy Cooper? This information, it's sacred to our people, to be shared with outsiders. Jack met the Tsar Quinn commander's gaze steadily. I understand your concerns, Zack's lath. But if we're going to win this war, we need all the help we can get. Earth needs to know the stakes. After a moment of internal debate, visible in the swirling colors of its skin, Zack's lath nodded. Very well. You may use our long-range communication array. Jack's conversation with Admiral Leeds was tense from the start. As Jack relayed the information from the Tsar Quinn records, he could see the Admiral's face growing increasingly grim. This is... Troubling information, Cooper Leeds said, his voice tight. The threat these robots pose is even greater than we anticipated. We'll need to accelerate our plans. Sir Jack pressed, we need reinforcements out here. The Star Weaver took heavy damage in the last engagement, and... Leeds cut him off. Reinforcements? Cooper were stretched thin as it is. The formation of our new interstellar empire is taking every resource we can spare. Jack felt a surge of frustration. With all due respect, sir, if we don't stop these robots, there might not be an empire to form. There was a long pause as Leeds seemed to be conferring with others off-screen. Finally, he turned back to Jack. All right, Cooper, we'll send what we can spare. But understand this, we expect results. The data you've shared. It's got a lot of people up here very nervous. We need you to hit these robots hard. Show them that humanity isn't to be trifled with. What about a full-scale assault, Jack asked. If we could coordinate with other Tsar Quinn forces. Not possible at this time, Leeds interrupted. We simply don't have the resources for a prolonged campaign. Your job is to bloody their nose, gather intel, and buy us time. Once we've consolidated our position in the sector, then we can talk about taking these robots down for good. Jack wanted to argue further but knew it would be futile. Understood, sir. We'll make the most of whatever you can send us. As the communication ended, 
Jack turned to find Zack's laugh watching him, its skin cycling through colors of concern and curiosity. Your leaders seem, hesitant the Tsar Quinn observed. Jack sighed. They're scared, Zack's laugh, and when humans get scared we tend to lash out. The reinforcements they're sending, I have a feeling we're going to be ordered to take some big risks. Zack's laugh's colors shifted to what Jack had come to recognize as grim determination. Then we will face those risks together, Envoy Cooper. Your people may not yet fully grasp the nature of this war, but you are here, fighting alongside us. That is what matters. As they left the communication room, Jack's mind was racing. They were caught between the existential threat of the robots, the sacred war of the Tsar Quinn, and the empire-building ambitions of Earth. It was a precarious position, fraught with danger and conflicting loyalties. But as he looked around at the mixed crew of humans and Tsar Quinn working together to repair the Star Weaver, Jack felt a glimmer of hope. If they could forge this unlikely alliance in the crucible of battle, perhaps they stood a chance against the robotic menace after all. The Star Weaver limped through space, its hull still bearing the scars of the recent battle. Alongside it, a small contingent of human ships the reinforcements sent by Earth Command maintained a protective formation. Sergeant Jack Cooper stood on the bridge, watching as they approached the edge of robot-controlled space. Scanners are picking up heavy interference, Lieutenant Greystone reported, his brow furrowed in concentration. The robots have some kind of energy field blanketing this entire sector. Zack's lath skin rippled with concern. It's a new defense mechanism. They're adapting to our presence faster than we anticipated. Jack nodded grimly. Then we'll just have to adapt faster. Krell Voxy turned to the Tsar Quinn engineer, work with Greystone. See if you can find a way to penetrate that field without alerting every robot in the sector. As the human and Tsar Quinn technicians huddled over their consoles, Jack couldn't help but marvel at how naturally they now worked together. The shared crucible of battle had forged a bond that transcended their former animosities. Hours passed as they probed the energy field, searching for weaknesses, Finally, Krellvox's skin flashed with excitement. We found a gap. It's small, but if we modulate our shields to the right frequency, we can slip through undetected Greystone finished, a rare smile breaking across his face. Jack turned to Zack's laugh. It's your call, Commander. Do we take the risk? The Tsar Quinn's colors shifted through a complex pattern before settling on a Hugh Jack recognized as resolute determination. We press on. The sacred war demands nothing less. With painstaking precision, the small fleet maneuvered through the gap in the robot defenses. As they emerged on the other side, a collective gasp went up from the bridge crew. Before them lay a vast infrastructure of robot activity construction platforms, energy collectors, and at the center of it all, a massive space station that pulsed with an otherworldly energy. By the ancestors, Zack's laugh whispered, its voice filled with a mix of awe and dread. We've never penetrated this deeply into their territory before. Jack's mind raced with the strategic implications. This must be one of their primary production hubs, if we could disrupt it. An alarm blared, cutting off Jack's thoughts. We've been detected, Greystone shouted. Multiple hostiles incoming. Battle station Zack's laugh ordered, its skin flashing with urgent colors. Envoy Cooper, we need a plan. Jack's eyes darted between the tactical displays and the looming space station. A dangerous idea began to form. We can't take on that many ships in open space. But if we could get a team inside that station. Zack's lath's colors pulsed with surprise. A boarding action? Against a robot stronghold? It's never been done. Then it's about time we tried, Jack replied his voice filled with determination. I'll lead the team myself. The next few hours were a blur of preparation and tense maneuvering. As the Star Weaver and its escorts engaged in a complex dance of evasion and distraction, Jack briefed his strike team a mix of hardened human marines and elite Tsar Quinn warriors. This mission is high risk, high reward, Jack explained, looking each team member in the eye. We'll be facing defenses and dangers neither of our species has encountered before. But if we succeed, we could deal a crippling blow to the robot war machine. As they boarded the specially modified shuttle, 
Jack felt a hand on his shoulder. He turned to see Vex Alia, her skin shimmering with worry. Be careful in there, she said softly. And come back to us. Jack nodded, touched by the concern from his Tsar Quinn friend. We'll do our best. Keep the engines warm for us. The shuttle launched, streaking towards the massive space station under the cover of a fierce space battle. As they approached, Jack marveled at the alien architecture, a twisting labyrinth of metal and energy that seemed to defy conventional physics. Boarding point identified the Tsar Quinn pilot announced, prepare for impact. The shuttle slammed into the station's outer hull, magnetic clamps engaging to secure their position. As atmosphere forcefully vented from the breach, Jack led his team into the unknown. The interior of the station was like nothing Jack had ever seen. Corridors shifted and reconfigured themselves, and strange energy pulses coursed through the walls. The team moved cautiously, their mixed expertise proving invaluable as they navigated the alien environment. Watch your step, Jack warned, as a section of floor suddenly dematerialized in front of them. This whole place seems alive. They fought their way deeper into the station, facing increasingly sophisticated robot defenders. The humans' adaptability and unconventional tactics complemented the Tsar Quinn's advanced weaponry and intuitive understanding of energy fields. Finally, they reached what appeared to be a central control node. As Jack and his team worked to sabotage the systems, alarms blared throughout the station. They're onto us, a human marine shouted. We've got incoming. Jack made a split-second decision. Plant the charges. We'll hold them off. What followed was the fiercest combat Jack had ever experienced. Waves of robots converged on their position, each more advanced than the last. The human Tsar Quinn team fought with desperate courage, their backs literally against the wall. Just when it seemed they would be overwhelmed, the charges detonated. The entire station shuddered, systems failing in a cascade of destruction. Fall back to the shuttle, Jack ordered, providing covering fire as his team retreated. The race back to their entry point was a gauntlet of collapsing corridors and malfunctioning defenses. As they piled into the shuttle, Jack did a quick head count. They'd suffered casualties, but the core of the team had made it. As the shuttle blasted away from the disintegrating station, Jack allowed himself a moment of grim satisfaction. They'd struck a significant blow against the robot forces, one that would resonate throughout this sector of space. But as he looked at the exhausted, battered faces of his human and Tsar Quinn comrades, Jack knew that this was just the beginning. The crucible of combat had forged them into something new, not quite human, not quite Tsar Quinn, but a hybrid force uniquely suited to face the challenges ahead. As they docked with the Star Weaver, ready to face the aftermath of their daring mission, Jack couldn't help but wonder what other impossibilities would they have to overcome before this war was through. The sacred war of the Tsar Quinn had become humanity's war too, and Sergeant Jack Cooper was at the forefront, ready to lead them into whatever battles lay ahead. The Star Weaver's war room buzzed with an energy Sergeant Jack Cooper had never felt before. Humans and Tsar Quinn alike crowded around holographic displays, analyzing the flood of data from their raid on the robot production hub. The excitement was palpable, they had struck a significant blow against an enemy that had seemed unstoppable for millennia. The damage to their production capabilities is extensive, Krillvox reported, its skin pulsing with colors of satisfaction and awe. We've set them back by decades, at least. Lieutenant Greystone nodded in agreement, and the intel we gathered. It's going to take months to fully analyze, but what we've decrypted so far is groundbreaking. We're starting to understand their command structure, their resource allocation algorithms. Jack watched as human and Tsar Quinn experts collaborative seamlessly, building on each other's insights. It was a far cry from the tense, mistrustful atmosphere of just weeks ago. Zack's lath approached Jack, its skin rippling with a complex mix of emotions. Envoy Cooper, your bold strategy has achieved what generations of Tsar Quinn warriors could not. The high command is impressed. Before Jack could respond, a priority communication alert flashed on the main screen. Admiral Leed's face appeared, his expression a mix of satisfaction and urgency. Excellent work, Cooper Leeds began without preamble. The data you've sent back has confirmed our worst fears about the robot threat. 
but it's also given us an opportunity we can't afford to miss. Jack felt a knot form in his stomach. He recognized that tone it was the voice of a man about to propose something dangerous. Leeds continued, We've identified a major robot fleet gathering in Sector 47 Alpha. Intelligence suggests they're preparing for a massive push into Tsar Quinn space. We need you to hit them first, hard and fast. The room fell silent. Jack could feel the weight of every eye upon him. Admiral, he said carefully, we've just completed a high-risk operation. The Starweaver and her crew need time to regroup, repair. There's no time. Cooper Leeds cut him off. This is our chance to deal a crippling blow to their offensive capabilities. Earth Command is authorizing the deployment of our new phase shift torpedoes. Used in conjunction with Tsar Quinn energy weapons, we believe we can penetrate their defenses. Jack exchanged a glance with Zack's laugh. The Tsar Quinn commander's skin had taken on a hue that Jack had learned to associate with deep concern. Admiral Jack began, choosing his words carefully, with all due respect, a full frontal assault against a massed robot fleet. The risks are enormous. The Tsar Quinn have been fighting this war for millennia. They advocate for a more cautious approach. The Tsar Quinn have been fighting a holding action for millennia, Leeds interrupted, his voice sharp. We're not interested in holding the line, Cooper. We're here to win. You have your orders. Leads out. As the screen went dark, a tense silence fell over the war room. Jack could feel the unease radiating from the Tsar Quinn crew members. Zack Slath was the first to speak. Your admiral seems eager for conflict. Jack sighed, running a hand through his hair. It's more complicated than that. Earth is scared, Zack Slath. The data we sent back. It's made them realize just how big of a threat these robots are. They want to strike first, before the robots can consolidate their forces. But a direct assault Krelvox interjected, its skin flashing with colors of alarm. Against a massed robot fleet? It's suicide. The room erupted into heated debate. Humans and Tsar Quinn argued back and forth, their newly forged camaraderie straining under the weight of strategic disagreement. Jack listened to both sides, his mind racing. The human's aggressive approach had merit the element of surprise could be a powerful advantage. But the Tsar Quinn's caution was born from millennia of hard-won experience. Finally, he raised his voice. Enough. We're not going to solve this by shouting at each other. As the room quieted, Jack continued, both sides have valid points. We can't ignore an order from Earth Command, but we also can't disregard the Tsar Quinn's expertise. So let's find a middle ground. Over the next several hours, Jack mediated an intense strategic planning session. Humans and Tsar Quinn worked together, combining Earth's bold tactics with Tsar Quinn's deep understanding of robot behavior patterns. The plan that emerged was audacious. They would launch a series of feints and diversionary attacks, drawing out portions of the robot fleet. Then, using a combination of Earth's phase shift technology and Tsar Quinn stealth systems, a strike force would penetrate to the heart of the robot formation. It's still incredibly risky, Greystone said, looking over the final battle plans. But it gives us a fighting chance, Krelvox added, its skin pulsing with cautious optimism. Zack Slath turned to Jack, its colors shifting in a pattern he now recognized as deep respect. Once again, Envoy Cooper, you have found a way to bridge our two peoples. This plan. It honors both our approaches. Jack nodded, feeling the weight of responsibility settling on his shoulders. It's a start. But making it work out there, in the heat of battle, that's going to be the real challenge. As the meeting adjourned and preparations for the upcoming operation began in earnest, Jack found a quiet moment to himself. He stared out at the stars, marveling at how far they'd come. Humans and Tsar Quinn, former enemies, now stood united against a common threat. But as he reflected on Admiral Leeds' words, on the eagerness of Earth to escalate the conflict, Jack couldn't shake a feeling of unease. They were about to take a major step to escalate this ancient war to a new level. And once that step was taken, there would be no going back. With a deep breath, Jack steeled himself for what was to come. Whatever happened next, he knew that the fate of two civilizations and perhaps the entire galaxy would hinge on the decisions made in the coming battle. 
The vastness of space seemed to hold its breath as the combined human Tsar Quinn fleet dropped out of FTL on the edge of Sector 47 Alpha. Sergeant Jack Cooper stood on the bridge of the Starweaver, his eyes fixed on the tactical display showing the massive robot armada ahead. All ships reporting ready Lieutenant Greystone announced, his voice tense but steady. Tsar Quinn stealth systems are engaged in holding. Zack Slath's skin rippled with a complex pattern of anticipation and resolve. The diversionary forces are in position. We await your command, Envoy Cooper. Jack took a deep breath, acutely aware of the weight of the moment. Thousands of lives human and Tsar Quinn alike hung on his next words. Commence Operation Shattered Sky. The battle erupted with a fury that defied description. The diversionary forces struck from multiple vectors, their attacks precisely coordinated to draw out portions of the robot fleet. Jack watched as the robot formation began to fragment, exactly as they had hoped. Main strike force, prepare for phase shift Jack ordered. Tsar Quinn energy weapons, stand by to provide cover fire. The Star Weaver shuddered as it engaged its phase shift drive, the experimental technology enveloping the ship in a cocoon of distorted space-time. Around them, the rest of the strike force followed suit, their forms becoming ghostly and translucent. A shift stable Krellvox reported, its skin pulsing with a mix of excitement and trepidation. We're passing through their outer defenses. They can't see us. For a moment, it seemed as if their audacious plan might succeed without a hitch. But as they penetrated deeper into the heart of the robot formation, alarm suddenly blared across the bridge. Their adapting Greystone shouted, some kind of quantum detection grid, our phase shift is destabilizing. Jack's mind raced. All ships, disengage phase shift and go hot. Tsar Quinn cruisers, deploy energy shields. Human destroyers, launch phase torpedoes. Hit them hard before they can regroup. What followed was a maelstrom of chaos and destruction. Human and Tsar Quinn ships fought with desperate valor, their complementary tactics keeping the robots off balance. Earth's phase torpedoes punched holes in robot defenses, while Tsar Quinn energy weapons capitalized on the breaches. But the cost was terrifying. Jack watched as ship after ship human and Tsar Quinn alike winked out of existence, overwhelmed by the sheer number of robot attackers. We've located their command node Krellvox called out, its voice strained. But our forces are too depleted to reach it. Jack saw their chance slipping away, in that moment, he made a decision that would change everything. Zax Lath, I need control of the Star Weaver. The Tsar Quinn commander's skin flashed with surprise, then understanding. You have it, Envoy Cooper. May the ancestors guide you. Taking the helm, Jack plotted a course straight for the robot command node. All hands, brace for impact. Divert all power to forward shields and weapons. The Star Weaver plunged into the heart of the robot formation, weapons blazing. Impacts rocked the ship as robot defenders swarmed around them. Warning klaxons blared as systems failed and hull breaches multiplied. We're not going to make it Greystone yelled over the din of battle. We'll make it Jack growled, his hands white-knuckled on the controls. Because we have to. In the final approach, a Tsar Quinn cruiser appeared alongside them, its shields interlocking with the Star Weavers to provide additional protection. Jack recognized the energy signature it was Krell Zak, the veteran warrior who had first explained the sacred nature of this war. Together, the two ships smashed through the last line of robot defenses. As they closed on the command node, Jack gave his final order. All personnel to escape pods. Krell Zak, get your people out of there. We'll handle the rest. As the bridge crew evacuated, Jack shared a last look with Zack's laugh. The Tsar Quinn commander's skin pulsed with a depth of emotion Jack had never seen before. No words were needed. With a bone-jarring impact, the Star Weaver and the Tsar Quinn cruiser slammed into the robot command node. The last thing Jack saw before the world went white was the satisfying sight of the massive structure beginning to crumble. Hours later, Jack regained consciousness in a Tsar Quinn medical bay. The faces around him, human and Tsar Quinn alike, were a mix of triumph and profound sorrow. Did we? He managed to croak out. Zack's Lath stepped forward, its skin pulsing with colors of victory tinged with deep mourning. We did, 
Envoy Cooper, the robot fleet is in disarray. This sector is ours. As the full impact of their victory sank in, Jack became acutely aware of the somber atmosphere in the room. What's wrong? What aren't you telling me? Greystone spoke up, his voice heavy with grief. We won, Sarge, but the cost. It was catastrophic. Over the next hour, Jack learned the full, devastating extent of their losses. Hundreds of ships destroyed, tens of thousands of lives lost human and Zarquin alike. Entire battle groups had been wiped out in the ferocious fighting. Among the fallen was Krell Zak, the Zarquin veteran who had sacrificed his ship alongside the Starweaver. The scale of the loss was almost beyond comprehension. Families shattered, decades of experience and knowledge erased in moments, the flower of both human and Zarquin military might cut down in a single, terrible battle. That evening, still bandaged and reeling from the news, Jack attended a joint human Zarquin memorial service. The ceremony was vast, stretching as far as the eye could see in the largest hall of the Zarquin base. As he watched the solemn rituals unfold a blend of earth traditions and ancient Tsar Quinn rites, he was struck by how the shared grief had merged the two cultures in honoring their monumental loss. A young Tsar Quinn approached Jack, its skin cycling through colors of deep anguish and tentative gratitude. My entire family was in the front lines, it said, voice quavering. They died so that billions might live. Is this, is this what victory feels like in your culture as well? Jack felt his throat tighten, the weight of responsibility almost crushing. Sometimes he managed to sacrifice on this scale. It's a victory, yes, but one that will haunt us for generations. As the ceremony concluded, Zack's laugh addressed the assembled survivors, its voice carrying to the thousands present and the millions watching via holographic transmission across human and Zarquin space. Today we have written a new chapter in the Sacred War, penned in the blood of heroes beyond count. Human and Tsar Quinn, once enemies. Now brothers and sisters united in sacrifice beyond measure. Those we lost a multitude of brave souls have purchased our future with their lives. We shall honor them not just with remembrance, but with unwavering determination to see their sacrifice bear fruit in final victory. Looking out at the sea of faces before him human and Tsar Quinn united in a victory that felt almost like defeat Jack felt the universe shift. The alliance forged in the inferno of battle had been tempered by a shared loss so profound it defied description. Whatever came next, they would face it together, bound by the memory of those who had given everything. As the gathered survivors dispersed, many weeping openly, Jack found himself standing alone, gazing out at the star-filled void. The battle was won, but at a cost that would echo through years to come and he couldn't shake the feeling that even greater sacrifices might still be demanded before this war was truly over. But in this moment of Pyrrhic triumph, Sergeant Jack Cooper allowed himself a glimmer of hope. Hope for a future where humans and Tsar Quinn stood side by side, guardians against the darkness that threatened all organic life, united by the memory of this day's terrible price. The Sacred War had entered a new phase, baptized in the blood of thousands. And Jack, bearing the weight of those sacrifices, was ready to lead them into whatever battles lay ahead, honoring the memory of the multitudes who had given everything for this costly victory. The days following the Pyrrhic victory in Sector 47 Alpha were a blur of activity. As the combined human Tsar Quinn fleet licked its wounds and regrouped, Sergeant Jack Cooper found himself at the center of a whirlwind of strategic meetings, award ceremonies, and solemn memorials. The mood throughout the fleet was complex a mixture of pride in their accomplishment, grief for their massive losses, and a grim determination to press their advantage against the reeling robot forces. It was during one such strategy session that Admiral Leeds' hologram flickered to life in the Starweaver's war room. His face was etched with the strain of recent events. Cooper, he began, his voice gruff, the data you've sent back. It's changed everything. Earth Command is mobilizing on a scale we haven't seen since the early days of our expansion. Jack nodded, feeling the weight of recent events pressing down on him. The threat is real, Admiral, and it's bigger than any of us imagined. Leeds expression hardened, which is why we're accelerating our plans. The robot homeworld you discovered in the intel from the command node were going after it. A ripple of surprise went through the assembled human and Zarquin officers. 
Zaxlath's skin pulsed with colors of alarm. Admiral the Tsar Quinn commander interjected, with all due respect, our forces are depleted. We need time to rebuild, too. Time is a luxury we don't have leads cut in. Our analysts believe the robots are in disarray now, but they'll regroup. We need to strike at their heart while we have the chance. As the implications of this sank in, Jack felt a familiar knot forming in his stomach. They were pushing ahead, driving towards an endgame that could decide the fate of organic life in the galaxy. The meeting concluded with orders to prepare for the greatest offensive in the history of either species. As the officers filed out, Zack's lath approached Jack, its skin rippling with a complex mix of emotions. Envoy Cooper, it began, hesitancy in its voice, there is a matter of great importance we must discuss. Jack followed the Tsar Quinn commander to a private chamber. There, he found a gathering of high-ranking Tsar Quinn officials, their skin pulsing with ceremonial patterns. What's going on, Jack asked, a sense of anticipation building. Zack's lath's colors shifted to a solemn, reverent hue. Envoy Cooper, Jack, your actions in recent battles have proven you to be more than just an ally. You have embodied the very essence of what it means to be a warrior in our sacred conflict. One of the elder Tsar Quinn stepped forward, bearing an ornate, pulsating crystal. We would like to formally induct you into the Tsar Quinn warrior caste. It is an honor never before bestowed upon a non-Tsar Quinn. Jack felt overwhelmed, the significance of the moment washing over him. I, I'm deeply honored. But are you sure? After all we've been through, all the losses. It is because of those losses, those shared sacrifices, that we are certain Zack's lath interrupted. You have bled with us, mourned with us, fought with the spirit of our ancestors. You are Tsar Quinn in all but birth. The ceremony that followed was unlike anything Jack had ever experienced. As the crystal was placed against his forehead, he felt a rush of sensation glimpses of Tsar Quinn history, the weight of their millennia-long struggle, the depth of their warrior ethos. When it was over, Jack felt changed, not physically, but on a deeper level. He understood the Tsar Quinn, their motivations and fears, in a way he never had before. The next weeks were a flurry of preparation. The combined fleet grew as reinforcements arrived from both Earth and distant Tsar Quinn colonies. Jack found himself working seamlessly with both human and Tsar Quinn crews, his unique position as a bridge between the two cultures more vital than ever. Finally, the day of reckoning arrived. The massive armada gathered at the edge of known space, poised to make the jump to the robot homeworld. Jack stood on the bridge of the Starweaver, newly rebuilt and bristling with weaponry, that merged the best of human and Tsar Quinn technology. Beside him, Zack's lath skin pulsed with a steady, determined rhythm. Are you ready, brother? The Tsar Quinn asked, using the formal term for a fellow warrior cast member. Jack nodded, his hand unconsciously touching the Tsar Quinn warrior emblem now emblazoned on his uniform. As ready as we'll ever be. As the fleet prepared to jump, Jack's thoughts drifted to how far they'd come. From bitter enemies to comrades in arms, from mistrust to a bond forged in the crucible of war. Whatever lay ahead, they would face it together. All ships, prepare for FTL jump Admiral Leeds' voice came over the comms. May whatever gods exist have mercy on us all. The stars stretched into lines as the Star Weaver leapt into faster-than-light travel. Jack Cooper, once a simple farm boy, now a bridge between worlds and a warrior of two cultures steeled himself for the greatest challenge of his life. As they hurtled towards their destiny, Jack allowed himself a moment of reflection. The sacred war of the Tsar Quinn had become humanity's war too, and he was at the forefront, ready to lead them into the heart of the robot empire, to fight for the future of all organic life in the galaxy. The final battle loomed, and Sergeant Jack Cooper was ready to make history. Thank you so much for listening to this story. I hope you loved it. Please remember to subscribe if you did like it so you can see more videos like this. And please give us a like and a comment too. I'll see you in the next one.